Today's killer DIY is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're finally ready to share your ideas with the world, you need a website. Head to squarespace.com backslash the DIY designer for 10% off your beautiful website. I'm a genie. I'm a freaking genie in a bottle because your wish is my command. All of you really liked a shirt that I wore. Uh, if you remember the embroidered jacket video that I did, it was that sheer embroidered jacket. I was sitting right here on this table wearing a very colorful outfit and all of you guys freaked out over the shirt. I started getting a couple comments. So I was like, I'm going to screenshot these comments, you know, use them in a future video. And then I was like, there's a lot of comments to screenshot. And then I had like a folder of comments that I had screenshotted. So you guys are going to need some flannels for this, uh, for this project. Now there's two things to keep in mind. One is you want flannels that are 100% cotton. That's how you're going to be able to not only pull out all of the color with the bleaching process, but it's also how you're going to be able to put in a ton of color. I would actually recommend going to a thrift store and buying a couple of these. There's no way to, to anticipate what's going to happen when you bleach it. So I would recommend getting a couple that way you're not like all your hope is on one flannel all right let's do the uh let's do the material shot let's get right into this sucker it's gonna be a good one Step one is bleach. So you're gonna take a full gallon of bleach and dilute it with just a little bit of water in a big tub. You just don't wanna be doing 100% bleach because it is really harsh on the fabric. Now for this first one, I thought that I would do kind of like a dip bleach look, leaving the bottom half its original color and bleaching out the top. So I put it on a pants hanger, that way I had a level, easy way to hold it and slowly dip it in. Then with gloves on my hand, I kind of pushed it until I created a nice clean line like you see there. I let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, and when I pulled it out, you can see the color I could never have anticipated. It's like teal and peach, which is so weird. But what I did is I drained out a lot of the bleach, squeezed it out, and let it sit. And because I didn't wash it right away, the bleach continued to work, and it became almost completely beige when it was done. Now on this one, I thought I would do the opposite. So I would bleach out the bottom, which is why it's just on a regular hanger. I end up not loving it, and that is the one on the left there. I bleached it entirely, and you can see it turns out pink. But for reference, here is a photo of what everything originally looked like. You can tell it's really hard to know exactly what color it's gonna come out like, which is why I recommended to just buy a couple of flannels, bleach them all, test them out, see how it works. Now, the next step is dissolving soda ash in some hot water. It just helps dissolve it, and you're gonna add that water to fresh water in the bin. Make sure you clean out the bleach. Soda ash is really important to remove any film or excess that's left on the clothing. It's something that you use when you tie dye, and in this case, you wanna do it because it's gonna remove even any excess color. Let it sit for about 20 minutes. This is a really important step. Then you're going to wring it out and leave the shirts damp. Now it was time to make my dyes. This is actually one of the most time consuming parts of it. Once your dyes are made, the process is super fast. So I love these powdered dyes, although you can use anything you want. These powdered dyes are so incredibly saturated. The colors are really true. What you see is actually what it looks like once it's washed. So you're gonna mix two teaspoons into the water and in between each color, make sure, make sure to clean each measuring spoon because even the slightest amount of powder mixed with the next color will affect the new color. So you're just gonna mix all of the colors you want. These are eight ounce squeezy bottles. Again, everything is linked below. And now you need a setup. Really all you need is like drainage. You just need a way to spray your shirts and allow the color to drain through so it doesn't pool up in the back, affecting the color on the back. So here is my first shirt. This was that first teal one, and you can see I bleached out the bottom, uh, not completely, but almost, and I'm just protecting the bottom of my surface with some plastic there. So the first thing I thought was I would do like black shoulders. So I'm using the black dye and squeezing it onto the shoulders, just creating a nice straight line. This is one of my favorite colors. It's the medium blue. And this was my first shirt. So I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted them to look like. I do it, you know, really only half. You can see there's a lot of the original shirt showing through. Once I did the teal version, I realized, no, I want it fully saturated. So I open up all of the folds of the shirt, leaving out the cuffs and a few inches on the bottom to be that sort of beige color. I went back in with my medium blue in order to saturate it fully, flip it over to do the same to the back. And one thing I'll say is I realized that if you 
you saturate it enough, you actually don't even have to flip it over. I decided to leave the shoulders on that one kind of tie-dyed and you'll see it at the end, it looks so cool. So I learned a huge lesson on this one. This shirt, I bleached for a really, really long time to get the color out of it and it was already one of those really soft flannels. The bleach weakened the shirt so much that by the time I put it in the washing machine, it like shredded and fell apart. So if you're working with a really soft, sort of lightweight flannel, just know that the bleaching process is gonna be really harsh and I would recommend only bleaching it for a short while. Here's the shirt that I only bleached the top half and I decided to just add that denim blue. I thought those two colors would look beautiful together and you'll see later, I end up cropping it so only a few inches of that plaid shows and it's really cool. Here was the original red shirt. Now it came out a really pretty pink, so I thought that doing fuchsia on the shoulders and the hem would look really cool. It would be kind of like an ombre pink situation. I took the top and bottom and made it solid, and then I sort of sprinkled a couple throughout, and you'll see later, I end up sprinkling a little bleach in the top and the bottom to connect them. I can't wait for you to see it. It comes out really cool. Here is my first take at the rainbow version. So I did a lot of red at the top and went in with yellow to create a band of orange right there above the yellow. I do the same thing there with the green. I put turquoise and then went back in with yellow to give that really bold Kelly green color. Now I create my chunk of turquoise. I went back in with a little more yellow to make sure that the uh, orange really showed up and went in with that beautiful teal, uh, excuse me, medium blue on the bottom. Then I took some black and just sort of like sprinkled it because I didn't want it to look, I wanted like more grungy. So I thought the black sprinkles would look really pretty. Okay, this is super important. This is where I learned a lot of lessons. This is a couple days later. I went and just bought a black, white, and gray shirt that I didn't bleach at all. Turns out if you don't have color in it, you actually don't have to bleach it. The color will take beautifully. So if you guys can get black, uh, I mean white, gray, beige, pale colors, the dye is so strong that it really will overtake those colors and you can skip the bleaching process altogether. It's one less step, it's one less material, it's one less washing, and it will really protect the integrity of the fabric, again, if that fabric was really soft to begin with. Now, once you've dyed everything, you just wanna let it all dry. I let them dry for like 24 hours, so I just put them off somewhere where they were on a protected surface on some plastic sheets and just let them all dry. Then you put them in the wash, I'm so excited, but they need to dry. And while I have them sitting and drying, I am going to talk to you guys about today's incredible sponsor. If there was ever a company that was perfectly suited to all of you watching, it is Squarespace because they help any individual who has something that they wanna share with the world, they help you share it. They have all of these really incredible, super high-end design templates perfectly suited to e-com or blogging or photography or whatever it is, the business that you've been thinking in the back of your mind that you might wanna try. They have a template. This is where it starts. It starts with a digital presence and that means a website. Head over to squarespace.com backslash the DIY designer. You can use our promo code, which is the DIY designer, to get 10% off once you've found the template and start getting your brain going. It's time to let the creative juices flow, baby. All right, let's take a look at how these incredible shirts came out. 